In this video, we look at strong and weak acids and bases. So we'll start with the definition of strong acids and bases. Strong acids and bases completely dissociate or ionize in solution. So here's an example of a strong acid. This is hydrochloric acid and it dissociates into H plus and Cl negative ions. Because it's a strong acid, it dissociates completely. So if we have one mole of HCl, it'll dissociate into one mole of H plus ions and one mole of Cl negative ions. Next we have a strong base. This is sodium hydroxide and sodium hydroxide dissociates into Na plus and OH negative or hydroxide ions. If we have one mole of NaOH, it'll dissociate into one mole of sodium ions and one mole of hydroxide ions. Next, the definition of a weak acid and base. Weak acids and bases partially dissociate or ionize in solution. So here's an example of a weak acid. This is ethanoic acid. And here's an example of a weak base. This is ammonia. So for weak acids and bases, we use the equilibrium sign. So that means there's an equilibrium between the ethanoic acid and the ethanoate ion and the H+. And for weak acids and weak bases, the equilibrium lies to the left. So just to recap, a strong acid or base completely dissociates in solution. A weak acid or base partially dissociates in solution. Next, we look at some examples of weak and strong acids and bases. So we'll start with some examples of strong acids. There's sulfuric, hydrochloric, and nitric. Sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid. Hydrochloric and nitric are called monoprotic acids. Diprotic means it has two hydrogen ions. Monoprotic means it has one hydrogen ion. So next, some examples of weak acids. There's ethanoic acid and methanoic acid. These are carboxylic acids, and we have carbonic acid and phosphoric acid. Moving on to some examples of strong bases, we have sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, and barium hydroxide. And then finally, some examples of weak bases, we have ammonia and the amines. So next we look how to distinguish between strong and weak acids and bases. So the first method is electrical conductivity. Strong acids and bases have a high concentration of ions in solution because they dissociate completely. Therefore, they have higher electrical conductivity than weak acids and bases. So here's an example of an experiment that could be used to distinguish between strong and weak acids and bases. So this bulb is the brightest, so this could be the strong acid or the strong base. They both dissociate completely in solution, giving a high concentration of ions which conducts the electricity. On the right, we have the bulb which is less bright, so this could be the weak acid or the weak base. They partially dissociate in solution, giving a lower concentration of ions, so this solution has a lower electrical conductivity. And on the left, the bulb doesn't light up at all, so this could be pure water. So there are two more ways to distinguish between a strong and weak acid and base. The first is rate of reaction. Strong acids will have a higher rate of reaction with metals than weak acids because they have a higher concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. So this example here can only be used with strong and weak acids because they react with metals to form hydrogen gas. Next is pH. pH is a measure of the concentration of hydrogen ions in solution. Strong and weak acids and bases of equal concentration can be differentiated using the pH scale. A strong acid will have a lower pH than a weak acid, provided they are the same concentration. 